So Shadowkeep was cool, and Shadowkeep brought back the moon and upgraded and enhanced it. And so we, we brought a destination out of the vault and, you know, spruced it up, and that's where you got to play. We're not doing that with this fall's destination, Europa. It's a brand new place you've never been before. And both the Witch Queen and Lightfall are going to also include brand new, never before seen destinations. These expansions will stretch out across a timeline that's gonna bring much anticipated enemies to the forefront and hopefully deliver some twists, turns, drama that uh, we don't think anyone's gonna see coming. But to deliver these big content beats each and every year, and keep building on top of our seasonal experiences while making technological leaps forward, we also need to make some big changes to the way we treat some of our older legacy content. The stuff that maybe is getting a little long in the tooth that you're not really looking at and playing anymore, you're like not- De really Destiny, <laughs> Destiny 2 is a huge game. We have nine destinations, 40 story missions, 54 adventures, 42 lost sectors, 17 strikes, 31 PVP maps, seven raids, and hundreds of game systems that layer on top of that. I could go on, and I probably screwed up one of those numbers. The fact is, the game is too large to efficiently update and maintain. We're on track to be like 115 gigabytes on PlayStation alone, and our updates to the game are huge, and we're starting to reach the limits of our ability to patch. We don't want to start over from, from scratch and build a sequel. And in order to make a sequel, we would have to stop supporting Destiny 2. Like, it would effectively go dark. You know, we talk about a single evolving world. A single evolving world. Not multiple evolving worlds, <laughs> but a single evolving world. And we don't want people to have to start over. We don't want to have that loss of continuity with our game systems and our communities and all the players together. We don't want to put another number on the box. So instead, here's our plan. Each year, just as a new expansion comes out, we're gonna cycle older, less actively played activity and destination content out of the live game and into what we're calling the Destiny Content Vault, the DCV. <laughs> Moving content into this vault is gonna allow us to add support for D2 for years, including Beyond Light, The Witch Queen, and Lightfall. This vault is also gonna allow us to take content from Destiny 1 do some work on it, get it ready to come back into the Destiny 2 ecosystem. So we're not just gonna be taking stuff away, we're also gonna be going into those the classic vaults and kind of bringing some stuff back or unvaulting activity and destination content each year. Thinking about the greatest hits of Destiny, right? Like, what's, what are the new tracks we can lay down? What's something from the past that was like pretty cool that could be made even better if it existed today? And what, is, what does that look like? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people there's a lot of awesome stuff that the team has built over the you know six years of six years of making Destiny and that Destiny 2 players totally have missed out on. Like later this year, Destiny 1's Cosmodrome is coming back this fall as a selectable destination. Its three strikes are also going to come back during season 12 and season 13. And part of the awesome thing here is a bunch of players haven't played Sepix. Sepix was the strike from the beta way back in like summer 2014. It is the like the oldest, like the definitive, most... The definitive, like, original strike that yeah. we felt like hit the right notes yeah, in, like, in Destiny 1, yeah. right? And yeah. we left all that behind when we made Destiny 2, and we're saying, like, we don't want to do that again. Well, let's not do that again, but let's also reach into the past and, like, bring it into the present. And there's a lot of great content in our past, and maybe this year we'll see a, a classic raid come back. I think it'd be pretty amazing this year to see the Vault of Glass kind of unvaulted and returned in front of players. Like I can imagine things like champion Praetorians instead of just regular Praetorians and kind of updating it slightly to the modern context, uh, but still preserving that like classic feel. This fall when the expansion comes out, not only are we gonna be bringing back Cosmodrome and adding Europa, but we're gonna look at some of that content that's been in the game for a long time, that's been free, that isn't actively played, and that's, that's when some of that is gonna be vaulted.